no. We've gotten an error. But what is an error? What kind of error? What does this all mean? That's what we're going to find out today. Errors are mistakes in your code. They will either stop it from working or cause it to work in a way that you really don't want it to. There are four types of errors that you will learn in this course. We have syntax errors, logic errors, runtime errors, and overflow errors. We will now look at each type in more detail. The first error we'll talk about is a syntax error. This is the worst error for your code. If you have one of these, your code will not work. Again, the program will not run with a syntax error. Syntax errors occur when the rules of a programming language are broken. They are compared to a grammar error, my apologies, in English. See, in English, there are rules you have to follow, and in programming languages, it's the same way. Take this sentence I'm writing. The dog barks. Look, I didn't capitalize the first letter of a sentence. I broke the rules. Er. Look at this. I didn't add a period or an exclamation point or any sort of punctuation. Er. I broke the rules. The same thing happens in syntax errors. If you break the rules, such as forgetting parentheses, forgetting a colon, adding parentheses where you don't need them, anytime you break the rules, that's called a syntax error. And once again, your program will not run with a syntax error. These are so bad for your program, again, because they won't work, that your programming environment will often find a syntax error for you and it will tell you where it is. Isn't that nice? Take a look at this code over here and see if you can spot the syntax error. We'll come back to it later. The next type of error, oops, is called a logic error. These happen when your program behaves unexpectedly, aka it does something you didn't want it to do or you didn't expect it to do. Think of this word logic. You think it means smart, right? Yeah. So a logic error is when your computer is not smart, when you wanna yell at it and say, you're so stupid. Take a look at this code right here. There's a logic error in it. See if you can spot it. One thing to know about logic errors is that a program will still run with the logic error. It just won't run the way you want it to. Here's the next kind of error, an overflow error. These happen when your computer tries to store something beyond its, ca beyond its capacity. This code doesn't look like it has an overflow error, but in some contexts, it actually does. I'm now going to provide two different analogies with some art that might help you understand the overflow error a little better. I know that for me, it was something, it was really hard for me to get it to stick, but then I finally got it, and I want that to happen for you too. Think of a cup. Here's my lovely little cup right here. And in a cup, you can store a certain amount of water, right? So here's my lovely pitcher, and we're pouring the water in, and it fills up to about here. And the cup can store that just fine. But then we keep pouring, and we keep pouring, and we keep pouring, excuse me, keep pouring, and oh no, the water spills. The cup tried to store too much water, and it can't because it only has a certain amount of water that it can store, so the rest of it overflows. That is an overflow error. That's the way I learned it in class, and if that's good for you, you might not want to stick around for the next one, because I don't want to confuse you. However, the one in class for me didn't always make that much sense, so I came up with my own. Imagine you have something you're trying to, like, grab, okay? This is, this is a big, giant ball of Play-Doh, okay? Just pretend. I know it looks like goop, but whatever. And this is my hand, all right? And so my hand 
can only grab this much Play-Doh. And if I try to grab any more, well, I can't. I, it just cannot be stored in my hand. Similarly, in an overflow error, a computer tries to store too much or too high of a number and it breaks the program. The next kind of error is a runtime error. And overflow errors are actually a type of runtime error. Anyway, these occur when a program starts but cannot finish. And they're often thought of when trying to access a file that doesn't exist or a variable you haven't defined. So for example, you have a list, right? And your list has one through 20 and it has 20 numbers. Say you told your program to get you list number 23. Well, there is no list 23. So even though your program started running properly, it couldn't finish. That is an example of a runtime error. So how can we fix errors? This next slide shows the way that the A people want you to know that you can fix errors. These are the methods and I will explaining, be explaining some of them in greater detail next. So you have hand tracing, you have debugging software, which is basically, it's just like a software that can look in your code and tell you where the error is or help you fix it. Visualizations, which I will definitely be explaining. Test cases, which is where you just put an input in and you already know what the output is supposed to be. So if it doesn't give you that output, then you know you did something wrong. And lastly, there is adding extra output statements. So I will be going over this one, this one, and this one in greater detail because these are pretty easy to grasp. First, we have hand tracing, which is basically when you work out a problem by hand, like a math problem. So you have this crazy, you know, awful math problem, uh, you know, nine billion, whatever, and you have to show like all these steps and show your work. Well, it's like that, only you treat your code as like your math problem and you work it out by hand with whatever given values you choose and see what's causing it to go wrong and then why it's going wrong and then you can fix it next up we have visualizations in the case of fixing errors this means a flowchart yeah remember these guys where you have like your diamonds and your decisions and your functions and all that yeah you can create one of these guys for your code and it can help you see in like a more visual way oh no this guy was supposed to be over here and it can help you realize what's causing the error adding extra output is where you just add a statement after like after every statement of the program that you wrote that is what these you know blah 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 that's supposed to be codes after every single one that does something to your variable you're going to add an output statement in Python, this is print. And then it's going to tell you what that variable is at that time. And then you can see what your variable is every step of the code. And you can see what is happening to your variable in every step of the code. And then you can find the error. So now it's time to try a few problems, and the first one will be the one with the syntax error. So, were you able to figure it out? Here's a little tip. First of all, these are gonna be way easier than anything you're gonna see on the exam. And second of all, each of these problems are written in Python. So if you know Python, that's gonna make it easier on you. But anyway, as you can see here, we have a function, a procedure, a method. They all mean the same thing. And we are defining this function, and this function is called addition. Da-da! 
what's next we have parameters and i will definitely do a video on parameters because those confused me for forever after this definition we have a print statement and that tells us to print the sum of the two parameters but there's an error this program will not run at all why is that well if you take a close look at the code right over here after the definition of the function you'll notice something there's not a semicolon I apologize there's not a colon therefore er, we broke the rules and if you break the rules of Python of Java whatever you're using your program will not run so whenever you're coding check for parentheses check for semicolons check for all those little things it will help <laughs> anyway that's the error it was missing a colon. Now, this program will run just fine. All right, in this problem, we have a logic error. Let's solve this one by using test cases and hand tracing. So we have a function that's called addition. So we want to add these two parameters together. So, Let's use a test case and input some numbers for both of these parameters. We're going to pretend x is 6 and y is 2. Now this is a test case and since we're trying to do addition, right, we know that 6 plus 2 equals 8. So 8 is what we should get from this function. Now we're going to work out this function like a math problem using these substituted numbers. So first we have x equals 6, y equals 2. Now we're going to follow the directions in here. It says print, so we're going to output the multiple, the product of x times y, because this is not an addition sign. So what we would get from this function using 6 and 2 is we would get an output of 12 not 8 and we know that this is 12 right so we know we did something wrong you can look back in the program and oh yeah here is the error because on this step that's when it got messed up and because you know 6 times 2 is 12 you already know what the error is. It's this mistake with multiplication. So you can fix it, make that a plus, and now your program will work as intended. Now we're going to solve this runtime error. Let's use the test cases again, and we'll use the same numbers too. X is six and Y is two. So I'll write that down. X equals six y equals 2. Now what does the function say to do? We're going to print x plus z. x is 6 plus, well what's z? See, our program started working out just fine. We were able to know our x and y, but z isn't defined anywhere in the function. That's why this is a runtime error, because it started working properly, but then something caused it to crash. And that something in this case, again, is this undefined variable. So how do we fix it? We're going to either define this variable earlier up, or we're going to change it to what it should be. In this case, it should be y. And now this method, function, procedure, whatever, is going to work how you want it to. Last, let's figure out this overflow error. Look at our statement. It says print four times four. This in itself does not have an error in a normal computer. Dot, dot, dot. However, what if we had a four bit system and that four bit system 
it can't represent super large numbers. It only has four bits to represent any number. So what does that mean? Well, if we have four bits, this value can represent up to one, this value can represent up to two, this value up to four, and this value up to eight. We have eight plus four, that's 12, plus two, plus one, that equals 15. So the largest number that this computer, this four bit system can store is 15. But look at our problem. It wants us to print four times four. Each of these numbers can be represented with four bits, but not their product. The biggest number a four bit system can, you know, store is 15. And since we have a 16, it just, it can't grab all that. Or the 16's going in the cup, you know, that can only hold 15, so some of it's gonna spill out. Therefore, the computer cannot store this number, so it's an overflow error, because it was asked to store too much. Asked to store something that exceeded its capacity. Bye! That's all for today. Remember that syntax errors will force your program to stop working. It will not run. See how important that is? Yeah.